now an explanation. The explanation, verses 13 through 18. All people sin with their words. We lie, deceive, curse, and slander. Believers still sin. Being saved does not make you immune to sin. People also murder each other. Murder is not just killing. It is the hatred of another person. Hatred of a person is murder in your heart. Sin only leads to eternal destruction. Sinners do not know God's peace, and there is no conviction in their heart. Now, the explanation for verses 9 through 20. Being under the law. Being under the law means that if you break a law, every person is silenced. And it means you will have to answer to God and be judged by him according to your deed or crime. Furthermore, furthermore, no human will be justified by keeping the law because once you have sinned one time, you have broken the whole law. You have failed to meet the requirements. So only eternal destruction awaits you. Only Jesus met the requirements of the law. That's why it says he fulfilled the law. Only a perfect sacrifice could atone for the sin of all mankind. Jesus is perfectly God and perfectly man. And the God of the universe. Only he can save us. Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for us. So our sins could be forgiven. And we could be saved from our sin, death, and hell. Jesus ultimately did it for his glory. Now, the explanation for verses 21 through 24. The righteousness of God is given to you by God when you put your faith in Jesus and are saved. You are made righteous by God's Spirit that you receive when you are saved. The law and prophets bear witness to being declared righteous when you put your faith in Jesus and are saved. All mankind falls short of the glory of God. Jesus forgave, I mean, Jesus forgave all your sins at the cross. So we are justified. We may like we Never sinned. Justification equals being cleansed of all sin. God's grace means that salvation is a gift from God. And it's not earned by works. Works are basically trying to follow the old covenant law. Old covenant. That nobody can keep except our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus paid our innumerable sin debt at the cross. Getting justice done. The wrath of God was satisfied. Now, the explanation for verses 25 through 26. God sent his son as a propitiation by his cleansing blood. So Jesus made it so we could receive salvation freely. By accepting the invitation through faith. Okay. Propitiation equals payment for our sins. God was per God was patient with us because he did not punish us as our sins deserved. Instead he took our deserved punishment upon himself. For his glory. To show that he is the only one that is righteous. He also did it because he loves us and he's the only one that can save us. Jesus took our place and got just done on the cross. Satisfying the wrath of God. It was, to, it was done to show that God is the only one that is truly just. And the justify our people who put their faith in Jesus. Now, 
the, the explanation for verses 27 through 31. Boasting is futile because you have nothing to boast about. No human can obtain salvation or immortality by, by themselves because sin has already corrupted mankind. Only God can give, can get the glory because he is the only one that can save you from our eternal destruction. Only God can keep the law perfectly. The only one who can give us salvation, all he asks us to do is to accept his gift of salvation that we're going to in him. Only God can boast of anything. So if you're going to boast, boast in Christ. But God is the God of all nations. Jesus and the us alike. But he's also the only one who can cleanse you of all sin by faith, whether circumcised or, or not. The law is not overthrown or abolished by the new covenant of faith. Rather, the law is upheld because Jesus fulfilled the law, resulting in the new covenant of faith.